name is Sarah Kowalczyk and I teach for the School of Nursing. Oftentimes they're normal cells. They're actually cells of the gland or the epithelium, wherever they're arising from. There's just too many. When I was in school, I was always so excited about learning and so excited about the way I was being taught. Just that idea of taking that knowledge that someone knows and sharing it with someone else and then me as I was gaining the knowledge how exciting it would be to then share that knowledge with someone else um, that was always in the back of my mind that that I wanted to be able to do that um, once I got to a place where I had um, knowledge to share. Do we emphasize how it's used in the clinical setting because we want to be perfectly crystal clear about this because I'm almost sure that this is going to come up again at some point. Because the lecture uh, style and the, the auditorium style classrooms are so difficult for student engagement. One of the things that I did kind of out on my own was I created a study session, an extra time where students could come back and um, go over specific case scenarios that, I've, that I had created to um, help with uh, their knowledge development. And I show up myself, the instructor, at a um, uh, study session and kind of lead that for two hours a week where it's a lot more uh, informal and students can ask any of the questions that they want and we go over the material a second time. Sarcomas. And they arise out of what type of tissue? I hope that we have a relationship of mutual respect. I think it's really important as a teacher to respect your students and respect what they're going through. Um, that most of them are really, really trying hard to do well and um, they have lots of obstacles, especially now, um, that students maybe didn't used to have. Um, and then I hope that they respect me for my experience and, and the knowledge that I have to give to them. My name is Geeta Suresh and I am from the Department of Justice Administration, Arts and Sciences, uh, University of Louisville. And I am teaching quantitative methods, it's a statistical methods. Normally students doesn't like because it deals with the numbers. <laughs> How change in your independent variable changes the dependent variable. First day of the semester of the class, most of them come inside the class. I hate math. I hate math and I don't like the subject because it is a core subject and we have to take it. So first week, it's a really difficult week. I have to deal with students' fear. So first talk itself is on fear. You don't have to fear for the subject. This is independent variable. This is dependent variable. First of all, I'll give them, you know, like my lecture and then my, you know, like, okay, you will be fine. Just listen to me. Don't be absent for even one class. You know, if you are prompt to the class and do all the homework and assignment, you are good to go. And any time, any, you know, whenever you are feeling, you know, you are not comfortable, see me one-on-one. -on -one. I will make an appointment with them one-on-one. -on -one. I will teach them, make them equal to the level of the others. So it's kind of a little difficult task here because I have to spend a lot of time outside the class. You still spend some money, correct? You beg, borrow, or steal something. <laughs> little fun, little humor. So I pull, you know, I will pull some cartoons and related to subject and show them, discuss those cartoons, and especially examples. If I give an example related to them, they are going to understand better than any theoretical example. Like for, for example, causal effect. One affects another. I'll say if you party day before the exam, you know how your score will be. Heather Mitchell, and I teach at the School of Nursing. What is increased in our cranial pressure, and why is it significant? When we talk about increases in our cranial pressure, 
I think the big thing that um, makes a difference is I ask them why. Instead of just telling them the answer, I will ask them a question, why does this occur? And I wait for a response from the students. Because instead of me telling them, this is why it happens, if I can get them to think about why it happens, it creates kind of a more meaningful, deep learning that they remember it and they say, I can remember when I take the exam or when I see this in practice. I think of you standing up there asking me why um, this happens or why I do this. What do you think we want to do as far as their positioning with a head injury? How do we want to position them in bed? I really want the students to succeed. I feel like teaching is a partnership. This is not just a job for me. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to teach, to be able to touch these students' lives and to create that relationship with them. Because a lot of times I feel like um, when the students graduate, they're not just leaving me. I still have a relationship once they leave. And a lot of them still contact me and, and ask me questions. So I'm creating a, a partnership with them, fostering that learning, that lifelong desire to improve themselves and to um, want to do more and be more in nursing. Blowing your nose can do what? increases intracranial pressure. I try to make sure that I'm approachable for the students, that I'm understanding. I set high expectations for my students and they note from day one that I expect a lot from them, but I let them know what my expectations are. I set it very clear for them and they know what to expect from me and what I expect from them. And I ask them, what do you expect from me? And um, by doing that, they know what to expect from me, but yet I can be flexible and understanding and approachable. So I think it makes the learning experience a lot better when um, you can have somebody that you can talk to about things that are going on and um, you know issues that you're having instead of being uncomfortable about that person and they don't really see me as a person, so I try to make them see me as a person. Hi, I'm Dr. Kyla Diastori. I teach Women and Gender Studies and Pan-African Studies, and I'm also the Audre Lord Chair in Race, Gender, Class, and Sexuality Studies. It's her image, and her imagery in that video became so ubiquitous that there were literally 300 or so hits on her homepage. And so what's emphasized to young girls very early on is not only are you socialized to be consistently viewed as attractive, my students feel like I'm a fun teacher and I make learning fun. I try to because I feel like all the professors that really uh, touched me and even my teachers K through 12, I always feel like the job of a teacher is to inspire their students. I just, I feel like that's our job. And, and not necessarily inspire them to become academics too, but to inspire, but inspire them to do something. Inspire them to do more than just graduate, get a job, and you know, kind of do something that moves them. So he wants to explore that, so he has most depth. Um, he has uh, Busta Rhymes. I make theory funny, I make things fun and funny, and I, I, I try to make them feel less intimidated by the material that I use. What I try to do is I try to include their voices in on the conversation and dialogue so they feel like they have something to say too and they have a contribution, which makes them more active in their learning. If they feel like you know everything and you know all the knowledge, then just dictate it to me. Then they won't participate and they don't really get as much out of the class. But I really demand that my students engage with the material because I feel like that's what I do with it. The practice did used to happen in the, in the actual United States. Personally, I'm out there, you know, I'm out on campus, I go to student events, um, different, uh, you know, RSOs. I talk about different events that are going on on campus because I feel that college isn't just about uh, sitting in a classroom and, and learning this type of material, but it's about all the things that go on. There are many things that go on on college campuses. They have talks about, you know, uh, different theories or different, um, you know, activist groups that are off campus. I try to introduce my students to. So just being, I think, visible and around. Candy Walker from the Department of Communication. Fifty-four McDonald's, and the majority of them have these groups. I try to do an, a whole array of different activities to try to get at different learners. So we'll do some group activities. We might even I might get them out of the comfort zone and do some kind of skit or portrayal of um, a case study. 
I might have them read a book and do a book club um, so they have to talk about the book they read, a scholarly book, in the context of the class. I will have them do group presentations so they're standing in front of the class. Sometimes I lecture but it's very few and far between when I lecture. I would rather have them engaged in the material than me telling them the material. Um, we do activities outside of the classroom. In my health communication class when we talk about death and dying, we do a, to do an activity that talks about the symbols of death and how do we talk about death in, um, in our own relationships, in our family, within our friends. So we'll go to a cemetery and walk the cemetery to find out what symbols are out there and what do those symbols mean and what do they communicate back to my students. I think that once you have a student-teacher relationship of any kind that it's going to transcend the boundaries of the classroom. If you're going to teach them, it, it should transcend. So if it's an email because you're reading their paper and they need to have a little bit more encouragement or you want to ask more questions about their writing or about an analysis they're doing, I think it's the extra step of going and saying, I'm going to ask them about that. I want to keep them after class and just ask them a few more questions. I am interested in their lives and I want each of the students at UofL to do well and sometimes turning in an assignment is just turning in an assignment but if you can ask a student questions about the assignment or ask them to redo something because there's so much potential in their writing or in their analysis or in their crit critical thought that um, maybe it's just pushing them a little bit further. I'm Lee Reidner. I'm in the uh, School of Nursing. We routinely teach people to, you to use a cotton swab. Okay. And what you can do is you can take the, um, the cotton swab and make a little wisp. It's a journey becoming a faculty member for many of us, and it's been a lot of fun, all of the stops that I've had along the way. And now it's great in that I am able to sort of share my clinical and life experiences, you know, as a nurse and a nurse practitioner with the students that, that I'm teaching. As we, we talked about in class, with the percussion of the liver, okay, we want to start here in the chest, okay, and percuss down. Well, I am truly blessed because I have students who are graduate nursing students and they bring to the class a wealth of experiences. And what I try to do is to take their experiences and help them work through a process of, re, of sort of reanalyzing what it was that, um, that they experienced and how we can use those to improve patient care. It's a lecture, it's discussion, we have case studies, which are always fun because with the the case studies, um, the students are able to tie in a lot of uh, real life experiences that they've had with uh, these different disease entities that, that we're getting to, uh, to study that, how to provide the best care for. I get satisfaction in the knowledge that there are a number of people out there that are providing care uh, that is the best care that they are able to deliver and that I had a part in that process. My name is Naira Campbell uh, Kurigan, and I'm a faculty and assistant professor in the Department of Industrial Engineering. Loving students, 
we just love each other. I mean, I do get angry. I'm, I'm strict. I'm not a very soft person, but um, at the end, they all work. I don't forgive laziness. They're very important to me, students, and um, I love what I teach, I love what I do, and I think they start loving it too. I don't know if it is uh, me or the area they start liking because um, they get very fascinated by some results and you know at the end they learn and they try it works and you can see their eyes you know it's like a scientist you know works on some very difficult puzzle and then suddenly you know after a year of work you, you figure out that the answer I mean that excitement was everything and that's what I see in their eyes at the end of the course it's a pleasure actually what I do and interesting thing in our profession that um, I think every professor should be proud of uh, seeing the results of their work a lot of my students actually love to present I teach them how to present at the conferences it's fun experience very difficult actually they find it's very hard, but once they present, they feel so happy and um, they want to know more. They take more classes with me and um, they try to connect it with other areas they learn in our department and I think it's just fascinating um, experience for me and for them too. My name is Deb Bowder, and I am from the College of Education, Department of Teaching and Learning in Special Education. Think about, practice what you're going to say. Make sure that you have some inflection. Try to use humor, because that keeps people interested in what you have. I direct the Assistive Technology Program and then it's really fun <laughs> because you look at how different types of technology can help individuals you know do things that they never could do before so and in teacher training I hope to pass on that passion to students so that they can work with children with disabilities and um, realize the technology could be used to um, enable those their students to do things they've never been able to do before. Make sure that you have some other materials that might help them. What would be, uh, what would, what would work with podcasting to strengthen? One them? of the things that I try to do is um, reach beyond the student, so to speak, and just say, okay, you know, you're, you're having trouble here. You know, let's talk about what's going on. How can we? resolve the situation as far as it pertains to the class or what have you. I'm there to help them and I'll go to bat for them and I, I, I think that's part of teaching too and again trying to model what I hope they will do then when they become teachers whether it's in elementary, secondary or if they go further and into higher education. My name is Pat Martin and I teach with the School of Nursing in the undergraduate program. Medicaid is not the same in Kentucky as it is in Indiana or Florida. They're all different. I'm here to guide, direct, facilitate, and also motivate the students to become engaged in learning what they need to know. So I like to do different things that catch students by surprise, that makes things fun to learn. So very typically that's what they do. When I was a nurse working in the hospital, of course we had numbers of students that rotated through and did clinical um, in the units where I worked. And I loved working with nursing students. And it was a good reality check for me 
A lot of times I would see these students so excited about learning and taking care of patients and their things that they did that that reinvigorated my love for nursing and what I did and the difference that you can make in a patient's day. And every day before I would go into the classroom, I think about that. What is this content? It's important, but how can these students take this information, learn it, but look forward to being able to apply it so they are really making a difference. In nursing, we're a caring profession. We have to care about our patients, their family, uh, the situations they come from, the situations they're going back to. And that needs to translate in the classroom with our students as well. We have a variety of students that come from different backgrounds, and I think it's very important to recognize those individuals as unique. They see that passion that I have for nursing. They know that I take their learning very seriously and that what we want for them is to not just learn, but to learn how to apply this information, to inspire them to be a good nurse, and how are you going to use this information. Michael Williams, uh, Division of Humanities. There's going to be presentations next week. Your classmates deserve the same amount of respect that you've given uh, uh, that you've given people previously. Constantly uh, allowed to bear witness to uh, the excitement of ideas. Uh, that kind of uh, interchange in which, uh, uh, in which a student confronts for the first time a particular work of art, a particular book, uh, is vitalized by it. Uh, I like the idea of going into the classroom and, uh, and being prepared to learn something, to be uh, being prepared to exchange ideas with the students, to play too. Because I think that uh, after we leave college, sometimes uh, people talk about putting away childish things, but putting away childlike things is a mistake. That delight, that immersion in, uh, in the experience of learning and the experience of ideas, that sense of playfulness when you let the ideas unfold in your imagination, that's the kind of thing that I like to do, and it's the kind of thing that I like to watch other people do it. Probably the most fun thing that I've ever done uh, was teaching a uh, medieval culture class, uh, which I've done on a number of occasions. And what we do is, uh, about the second or third day of the class, after an opening lecture, uh, I take a baseball cap, I fill it full of uh, uh, slips of paper that have uh, titles and positions and occupations in a typical medieval town. Uh, we pass it around and the student gets to draw uh, his or her uh, uh, position or occupation uh, and keep a journal or answer exam questions from the perspective of that uh, character. Confronting serious ideas does not mean that you confront them in a somber fashion. That kind of playfulness, uh, I hope, extends over into the discussion. I know that there's a certain irreverence they often really adopt toward me, and there's a kind of banter that goes on in the classroom. Uh, I'm pretty skilled to know when, uh, where the boundaries are and not to offend anybody. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but a good back and forth, uh, I think I create a comfortable atmosphere in the class uh, where people can laugh and people can relax. And, uh, and at the same time, that laughter and that relaxation makes them more prepared to engage serious and rigorous ideas. Thank you.